Hey, today I'm going to show you guys how to check your check engine light codes without using a scanner. Um, usually cars that are 996 and up in America, they are equipped with OBD2, which um, has a conveniency of using a scanner, which you can find on AutoZone or any auto parts store. Um, they usually let you use it for free and you can scan it and see what's wrong with your car while the check engine light is up. But if, um, if your car is before 996, which is like, um, it could be OBD0 or OBD1, you can check the engine light code by yourself without a scanner and I can show you how to do it. Uh, this method will work with uh, OB um, 0, 1, and 2. So not just the one before 996 cards. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with my car. Um, I was just um, adjusting and uh, messing with the O2 sensors and I threw a code and I got a check engine light. But, um, but I already knew uh, how to fix it. So I'm gonna re I reset it and everything was perfect. But uh, now I, uh, I disconnected the, the O2 sensor, so it's a great opportunity to show you guys um, what the issue is. How the um, ECU uh, displays these codes is that um, it looks at the, uh, the most recent problems with your car that causes the check engine light, and then uh, it's, it, it saves into the ECU so that um, when you um, find the codes, it'll show it up the most recent um, problems. So um, that's why it's able to show you the codes even when the car is off. Because it has already stored the, um, the problems into the ECU. And that's how you look into it. Know that my check engine light does work and I did not remove the bulb. It is functional. There it is. That was the fuel pump is um, when it was priming up. You can see it on. It does work right there. That was the check engine light coming on and off. The first thing you need to do is you need to find the service check port, which is a connector that's a two pin. It's uh, typically found in Hondas near this area, the driver kick handle. Okay. It's usually found, this is where the ECU is in this little panel. But right above it, you see that green, green stuff right there? And the blue connector, I already disconnected it, but that's where it's found. It's usually wedged into the green rubber, but you just take it out. This blue connector is the two pin. This is exactly the service check connector. And this is what you'll be um, using to find the codes. Make sure it's a two pin like this one. If it's not a two pin, then that's not it. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a paper clip uh, um, and then you're gonna um, attach the two terminals together with a paper clip. There you go, you can see the paper clip attaching the two terminals together and now we're ready to find the codes. It's a good idea to get a paper and pen ready uh, because the codes do happen quite fast. You know, you might not be able to keep up with it all in your head. So just get those uh, paper and pens ready. Like I said before, there's absolutely nothing wrong, wrong with my car. Um, I just disconnected the O2 sensor, so that's why it's throwing code. And I already replaced it, which, is, which, fixes, which fixes the problem, but um, but the car, the ECU still knows what the recent problem is. That's why it's gonna tell you what the recent problem is. And then um, we're about to find out. Turn it to the on position, but don't crank up the car, okay? On, on to the on position, which is two clicks. One, two, three, four, one. What you just saw there, you saw four long um, pulses. A long pulse means it's a it's a 10. It's equal to 10, a value of 10. And a short pulse is just equal to one digit. So I just saw four long pulses and one short pulse. That is equal to code 41. You got it? So if you immediately get like two pulses right when you um, put on the on position, that's code number two for two short pulses. And if you got like three long pulses, it will be 30. But I got four long and one short, so it's 41. And that is the code for uh, O2 sensor, bad O2 sensor or loose connection. Um, I already fixed it, but what you're gonna do, have to do now is after you fix the problem, you have to reset the ECU. Um, the easiest way to do it is to disconnect the negative terminal from the battery and just wait like a good minute 
Then you re reconnect it and the ECU is resetted and the codes should be clear. And if the problem, if you did not fix the problem, the codes will come back on um, very soon. But if you did fix it, the codes will re remain clear the entire time. Um, when you disconnect the, the battery, you're gonna have to redo the presets on your radio and all the other good settings. All right, now disconnect the negative terminal. All right, just wait for like a good minute and then reattach it. Now put it back the uh, negative terminal. Make sure you put it back nice and secure. All right, if you really want to know if the ECU did really um, reset itself, you can double check by putting back the paper clip and checking the codes again to see if it did reset. There you go. Check engine light stays on. There is no codes. The ECU has been reset. See it? Check engine light right there. Staying on, meaning no code. That means the, um, the check engine light history has been cleared. Nothing has happened recently. Remove the paper clip and you can put the blue connector back into the green um, cover back there to store it safely. And the blue connector has been placed into the green rubber properly. And that's what it looks like at the end. This is how you're gonna find it in the first place. I hope this tutorial helps and do your best to fix the issue that's causing that check engine light and get your car back and running.